Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this time. Thank you, Lord, because you are lifting up your people. And we bless your name for the great things you are doing. We pray, no Lord, the great work you do in every heart, every life will be permanent in Jesus' name. How we thank you because you fill our hearts with joy. And the joy of the Lord, that is our strength. Lord, we are praying that this joy that you have put within us will never dry up in Jesus' name. For this joy that is our strength will move us on until we climb the mountain top of success in Jesus' name. We are praying, Lord, that every child here, every boy, every girl, we are praying, oh Lord, everything that needs to be done for you to perfect your work in them, do it in Jesus' name. And for all our friends, all our other young people, victorious youth of this generation, in all the other locations, O oh Lord, as we're lifting us up here, lift them up in Jesus' name. Fill their hearts with your goodness. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the young people give me good amen god bless you you can be seated now we come to an important subject and it is a subject of partnership with god partnership to make your dream come true partnership everybody say that to make your dream come true Everyone that the Lord has called, God gives a dream, a purpose, a goal, a destination, a place to reach, and he maps out the way, the path, the road that leads to that mountain top. For many, many people, he paints the picture of that success in their hearts when they're very, very young. Other people, they almost come to the middle age. And then the Lord paints in their heart that dream, that picture of achievement, accomplishment. And that's it we call the dream, other people call it a vision. Other people call it a goal. Other people call it a worthy future to aim at. And it is as you center your mind and focus your mind on that goal, on that height on that dream and then you do not allow anything to distract your attention and you're moving on until you get to the place you want to go that's when you're able to eventually accomplish achieve and be the man the woman the lord wants you to be for joseph that's what the lord did for him he gave him a dream and yet the dream was still far away to be fulfilled in the future. And the Lord helped him, but there is one thing that helped him. It's a little word. W-I-T-H. With. The Lord was with him. That partnership with the Lord staying with the Lord and the Lord abiding with him with that was the word that carried him through and that word with spells out paints for us the partnership it is this partnership with God that makes a man to keep on moving on makes a woman to keep on moving on makes a boy makes a girl to keep on 
moving on until you reach your goal partnership to make your dream come true let me show it to you genesis chapter 39 verses 2 and 3 genesis chapter 39 verse 2 and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands the partnership was a thing that led him on led him on until his dream was fulfilled and i show you another man he is seen joshua chapter 6 in joshua chapter 6 once again we see when god comes into partnership with you and when you remain in partnership with god here is what he does he makes it to succeed in joshua chapter 6 verse 27 so the lord was with joshua and his fame was noised throughout all the country you don't make the name of a beggar to go around the country you don't make the name of a person who is not succeeding to go around the country when somebody has realized the dream he has accomplished he has achieved and his goal has been reached and the vision has been attained that's why his name goes around the country so the lord was with joshua and his fame was noised throughout all the country is god be with us staying with us abiding with us in partnership with us that reaches the goal judges chapter 6 in judges chapter 6 we see another man here gideon judges chapter 6 verse 12 and the angel of the lord appeared unto him and said unto him the lord is with thee thou mighty man of valor what makes a man mighty the presence of the lord partnership of the lord the lord is with you that makes you a mighty man of valor verse 14 and the lord looked upon him and said go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Verse 16. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. Surely I will be with thee. Surely I, Almighty God, in his power, in his strength, in his possibilities he said gideon i'm giving you an assignment and surely without a shadow of doubt i the mighty one of israel i will be with thee and thou shalt smite the midianites as one man when the lord is with us what discovery does that give us? Number one, that is the secret of progress. Partnership with the Lord assures you, grants you the secret of progress. In fact, you can even be announcing the progress to yourself because the partnership the Lord has with you is the assurance that progress is definite i use this word irreversible the secret of progress number two that partnership with god is a source of power 
Your fuel never runs out. Your power, your strength never fails you. Your wisdom never departs from you. And the possibility of success is never taken away from you when you have divine partnership. It's the source of power, number three. It is the sign of preference. The sign of preference. When God told Jacob, I will be with you, whithersoever thou goest, I prefer you above Esau. It's the sign of preference. Number four, it is the shield of protection. When the Almighty God stays with you, abides with you, remains with you, He protects you because He that abides under the shadow of the Almighty and the Lord is with him and the Lord is very near he will say of the Lord is my refuge and he is my fortress he is my God in him will I trust and surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence he shall cover thee with his feathers when the Lord is with you what's he going to do he'll cover you with his feathers under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day not for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, not for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone thou shalt tread on the lion and the adder the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under your feet when the Lord is with you it is the shield of protection number five is the seal or the stamp of the promise the Lord has given you a promise it's leading you on it's moving you on and he has given you the dream and he says you will reach that goal and then the presence of the Lord with you is to make sure that he does not allow anybody to be with you that will derail. That's like a train going off the rail. That will derail the vision. His presence with you is a seal or the stamp of the promise. Number six. When the Lord is with you, and he is your provider, the presence of the Lord with you, the partnership of the Lord with you, is the assurance of the sufficiency of the provision. The sufficiency of the provision. Number seven, it gives you the strength of partnership. One shall chase a thousand, but two shall put ten thousand to flight. Partnership brings strength. There is strength in partnership. The secret of progress. The source of power. The sign of preference. The shield of protection. The seal or the stamp of promise. The sufficiency of provision. And the strength of partnership. When we come into partnership with the Lord, or the Lord comes into partnership with us, that's what he does. That's what he does. And he makes the dream to come true. Your dream will come true. 
You can do better than that. In the name of the Lord, your dream will come true. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the promise of divine partnership. The promise of divine partnership. Number two, the price of divine partnership. The price of divine partnership. Number three, progress through divine partnership. Progress through divine partnership. We come to number one, the promise of divine partnership. And this is very important. In fact, this is a foundation to start from. Because you cannot be sure of the partnership of the Lord if he doesn't give you the promise. But when he gives you the promise, then you know that he will not fail to fulfill his promise. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And let me tell you something. As we're reading these verses, be looking for one word, with. With. Because that is the essence of partnership. And every verse, you will look for the word with. With. I'll be with you. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Who is this? Joshua. What's the name signifying? Jehovah saves. How do you put that for everybody to understand? The Lord saves. What's the implication of that in the life of Joshua? Joshua had been saved. The Lord had saved him. The Lord cannot give a sinner who is not saved his promise, I will be with you. As I was with Moses, how can your sin have separated between you and your God? A sinner is separated from God. But when that sinner realizes, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The blood of the Lamb had been given unto us for atonement, for cleansing, for forgiveness, for reconciliation with God. And there you come bowing before the cross of Calvary. I don't mean a wooden cross. I don't mean a brass cross. I mean by faith. You know that Jesus died for you on the cross of Calvary. And then you come to Christ and say, Lord, I give up. I surrender my heart, my life unto you. I will no more continue in my sin. Forgive me. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Take my sins away. I believe, Lord, because whosoever comes to you, you will in no wise cast away. And then you are saved. Then you become like Joshua. And you can say, Jehovah saves. That's Joshua. And if you are like that, and the Lord has saved you, and your sins are forgiven, then you have the promise of the Lord as I was with Moses. So will I be with you. I will not fail thee, neither will I forsake you. What a promise he has given to us, and what assurance we have. And as long as you remain in that experience of salvation, he has washed you, and you remain clean. 
He has purged you and you remain pure. He has taken your sins away and you don't attract the sins but yourself again. And you rejoice and you live in the experience of that salvation. You wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Jesus. The Lord Jehovah saves. You go to school. Temptation comes to you. And some people want to get you back into sin. And you say, God, I know you are with me. Jehovah saves. And he saves you from that temptation. And you don't fall. And other backsliders come to you and they invite you to sin. You say, no. Why? Jehovah saves. And he has saved me. And you remain like Joshua. That's when the promise of the Lord. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you as I was with Moses. Even so, when I be with you, there will be the fulfillment of the promise of the divine partnership in your life. And then we look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. We're looking at verse 10. Fear not, for I am with thee. That's a partnership again. Oh, once again, who are these people? Fear not. Fear not. Is the Lord telling the sinner, fear not, there will be no punishment for sin? Never. Is the Lord telling the backslider, prodigal son, fear not, in the far country where you are, all provisions are available? Never. Is the Lord telling the people who are not saved, who are not born again, fear not, I am with you? Never. Who are the people is telling? Look at the latter part of verse 9. Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. The people who are chosen by God, the people who are saved by God, the people who have turned away from sin and they have turned to the Lord as Savior and the Lord has accepted them and the Lord has chosen them he tells them and he gives them the promise of divine partnership fear not for I am with thee be not dismayed for I am thy God Satan is no more your God an idol somebody is hanging on the neck is no more your God. A ring that somebody is putting on the finger is no more your God. An image that they plant or that they put at the back or in the yard of a church building is no more your God. You are no more bending to that. And the village idol is no more your God. You are no more worshipping that. You have turned away from those dead idols. And you have turned to the living God. That's why he says, you are my child. You are born again. Your sins are forgiven. Fear not. I am your God. I will be with thee. Then in verse 10 it says, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In verse 11, Behold, all that were incensed, angry against you, shall be ashamed and confounded. I thought you would give me a great amen. How is it I am shouting here and then over there I cannot hear you say amen. Give me a good amen. amen. You are great. God will bless you and make you great. It tells us here, it says, they shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a sin of naught. Why? Verse 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, 
I will help thee. Once again, we discover that when you become a child of God, you actually become a favorite of God. And the Lord is watching over your life. And the Lord is protecting you. And the Lord is saying, I am not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you until I fulfill the dream that I've given unto you. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. The fire is talking about is the fire of opposition, the fire of persecution, the fire of trouble. And when you are passing through that time of trouble, you know, sometimes uh, we want to go for an exam. And while we're going for the exam, the devil then plants confusion in the family. Daddy and mommy, maybe they're having some disagreement. And at a bad time. And then daddy is saying, hey, you give her the money. Talking about the daughter, you give your daughter the money. Is it only my daughter? Is it not our daughter? Don't, don't, don't worry me. Give her the money. And then your mother is saying, go to your father. And then you go to your father. And it's at that time you are preparing for the exam that the fire is burning in the home. And you will sail through. That fire will not burn you. That fire will not affect your result in the exam in Jesus' name. The dream that God himself has painted in your heart. And the height of greatness the Lord is taking you to. Any fire will not quench, will not burn, will not destroy that dream in Jesus' name. Sometimes we go for exam. And then we are innocent because we're children of God. And we've been preparing hard. And it, that's the time that... Uh, unfortunately, some of the students, they will bring uh, some fire into the exam hall. I don't mean literal fire. You know, while we're sitting down and everything is just about to happen, then somebody will come in and then he begins to make a noise. How many of you have not paid your money? How many of you have not done this? And then he brings confusion, the fire of confusion. And then the mediator is, you know, we just waiting and saying, hey, children, young people, settle down, settle down. We want to start now. Here is your paper. Everything is intact. Look at, key, look at it. Nobody has, um, you know, broken the seal. Everything's, uh, I'm going to open it now. Get ready, get set, and get your numbers, registration, everything out. And then somebody is still making a noise, and he's saying, no, we're not going to have that to you. you. You will not do this because you didn't pay your money. You didn't pay your deal. What, what kind of fire is this? And then you're afraid, you say, I've prepared very well. These people are going to make me to fail. Nobody will make you to fail. Yeah. All the fire that may burn, you will pass through and the Lord will be with you. And you will succeed. And that dream, you will realize it in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. We're looking at him from verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 6. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee. To deliver thee, says the Lord God. You see that partnership there is a divine partnership. Verse 19. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. You see over and over and over again. 
the promise of divine partnership telling us there's nothing to fear you're going for your exam there's nothing to fear and sometimes when it says they shall fight against thee you are preparing for your exam and while you are preparing you read far into the night maybe like 12 o'clock 12 30 or 1 o'clock and then you say, let me sleep so I can wake up early tomorrow morning. I want to wake up by 5 o'clock and still do some revision. And then you go to sleep, quarter to 1, 1 o'clock. Just as you're sleeping off like this, here comes somebody totally in black or totally in red. Or red and black combined together. And he says, you, I will deal with you. You say, what have I done? Why are you doing like that to me? And then he's pointing at your face like this. You think you will pass. You think you are fasting. You think you are praying. You think you are coaching the promise of God. I will deal with you. And he begins to fight. And he'll say, leave me alone. Leave me alone. And you are screaming and crying in the dream. And then eventually, you wake up. And as you wake up, it scatters your brain. It scatters your mind. And all the preparation you still want to make, I'm still going to revise. Instead of thinking on your dream, and the divine partnership with you, you are thinking of the fight that that personality had with you in the night. That personality is wasting its time. You have succeeded already. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. The protection of the Lord is upon you. The shield of protection is around you. And the wall of fire, the wall of protection is around you. Nobody fighting against your success will succeed in Jesus' name. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. The Lord will deliver you. Just go to that exam without thinking about anything. You know anybody that comes to you in the dream to fight with you, that's a coward. That's a coward. Anybody that is wearing a mask and is hiding his face and then is fighting with you, that's a coward. If he's not a coward, why didn't he come during the day? When you are awake, when you can call the name of Jesus and say, you come to me in the name of your idol, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whom you have defied. Today, I will defeat you, Goliath, Philistine, and you will defeat him. I said you will defeat him. You know, they're afraid of you. That's why they come in the night. That's why they're hiding. That's why they're wearing a mask. You stand up in the name of the Lord and remember that even though in the dream or even in the day, they fight against you. This dream that God has given you, nobody will cancel it. Nobody will destroy it. Nobody will be able to reverse the dream of progress the Lord has given you in Jesus' name. Thank God we are overcomers. What are the overcomers? You have overcome. You have overcome. Uh, do you realize? Uh, keep up that hand. You don't know what you have done. The right hand that you normally use in writing the exam. Every time I ask who is the overcomer, that's the hand you raise up. That's the hand you raise up. And that hand will do well. I said that hand will do well. And that hand will succeed in Jesus' name. We're looking at Zechariah chapter 10. Zechariah chapter 10. I'm looking at verse 5. Zechariah chapter 10. Looking at verse 5. Remember, we're looking at the promise of divine partnership. It tells us here, Zechariah chapter 10 verse 5. And they shall be as mighty men, which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets. In the battle, they shall fight because the Lord is with them. And the riders on the horses shall be confounded. Enemies will be confounded. Acts of the Apostles chapter 18. The promise of divine partnership. Acts chapter 18. Verses 9 and 10. In verse 9. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, 
why have much people in this city the lord assures us as he assured paul the apostle the promise of divine partnership the lord is with us the lord will never leave us and the lord will never forsake us that's why we can boldly come to the Lord and say, The Lord is my help. I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. Point number two. The price of divine partnership. The price of divine partnership. If the Lord is going to be with us and remain with us, there is a price to pay. There is a condition to fulfill. As I told you, the Lord is not making his presence, his power, his partnership cheap. That is just with every dick and hurry. If the Lord is with every dick and hurry, then the partnership of the Lord will no more be precious. But the people that fulfill the condition, those are the people that are going to have the partnership of the Lord. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? No. If you are not in agreement with God, how can you walk with God? How can you have the partnership of the Lord? If God says something and you say no. How can God be in partnership with you? If God says, you're a sinner, and you know you're a sinner, you say, no, I don't agree. Jesus will save you. No, I don't agree. If you come to the Lord now, he will forgive you. No, I'm not coming. When he forgives you, he'll give you the power to go and sin no more. No, I don't believe anybody can be free from sin. Separate yourself from them. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. No, that's what I will do. Pray unto the Lord so he will give you the success. No, I will not pray. I will do it by myself. If you are disagreeing with God, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. No, I don't want to be at peace with anybody. Forgive the people that offended you. No, I will not forgive them. I fight them. How will God have his partnership with you? Don't keep malice. Go and greet that person you are trying to avoid. No, I will not greet him. Until we die. Me, when I make a decision, forever, forever, I will not greet him. You are not in agreement with God. How would you have partnership with God? Don't get involved with exam malpractice. No. That's my time. That's what everybody is doing. I will do it. I will join them. If you are not in agreement with God, you are not fulfilling the condition of divine partnership. Divine partnership demands a price to pay. It means you come to the Lord, you stay with the Lord, you agree with the Lord. When God says yes, you say yes. When God says up, you say up. When God says confess, you say confess. When God says believe, yes, I believe. It is that agreement with God that cements and seals the promise of divine partnership in your life. Look at it again. Can two work together except they be agreed? The price to pay in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. If the Lord is going to keep the promise of divine partnership, are you going to remain in divine partnership? Partnership with the Lord is what he says. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If you are attached to the Lord, you will not be attached to Satan. If you are in partnership with God, you will not be in partnership planning to do evil with unbelievers. 
If the Lord is saying, I will help you, don't worry, you'll succeed in this exam. If you agree with God, you will not at the same time go to buy question papers. You will not join with those some believers to do anything that is evil. That's a price to pay, to remain in fellowship and partnership with the Lord. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people and the price to pay the condition to fulfill you find it in verse 17 wherefore come out from among them all the other students that they want to commit immorality of their teachers or maybe it or whoever, so they can pass, come out from among them. They want to contribute money and give to the immigrator so that the immigrator will not look at whatever they are doing, even if they bring uh, answer papers or work out. Uh, problems they bring it to the exam hall they want to contribute money so that the major will allow them to do what they want to do come out from among them they are conspiring together and they are saying if the teacher doesn't cooperate if the mediator doesn't cooperate will smash his car will destroy his office or will even assault him I will rough handle him, come out from among them. Or maybe they are getting together and they are saying, we'll find one man somewhere. That man is powerful. And that man will make juju traditional medicine. And once you rub it on like this, or you wash your face like this, once you get to the exam hall, as you look up, all you'll be seeing on the board will be the answers to all the questions. And some people are so dense and so dull that they don't think that the children of the herbalist, they are not passing any exam. How is it if the herbalist knows the juju medicine to give you to wash your face and then you see the answers on the board? Why didn't you give the traditional medicine to his own child? Why is his own child a farmer, a beggar, a mechanic on the road and then he's not giving the charm or the juju medicine to his own child? It's foolishness. And the Lord is saying, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. You know, there are some people, instead of reading their books, instead of revising and reviewing what they ought to learn, they'll go and stay in the, in the yard of a particular white garment church, burning candle and rubbing with olive oil and burning incense. Thinking that it is the candle they burn, it is the incense they burn, and it is the olive oil they are rubbing on that will make them to pass. And it is ignorance. And the Lord is saying, the price and the condition that I will be in partnership with you and I will give you wisdom and I will remind you of things you ought to remember. The price you pay, the condition you fulfill is come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Give me a good amen. amen. The Lord will do it in your life in Jesus' name. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15. 2 Chronicles chapter 15. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Remember the condition. Remember, we're talking about the price you pay. For partnership with God, for divine partnership. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1. 
And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while ye be with him. That's the condition. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. I told you that the partnership of the Lord is not cheap. If the Lord is not, uh, you know, running after you, that's okay, you are in the far country, you are a backslider, you are a sinner, and let me be in partnership with you. No. His partnership is divine. His partnership is something great. His partnership is something precious. His partnership is something that will inject greatness and success into your life. It's going to be beneficial to you. Therefore, he wants you to come to him and demand that partnership. The Lord is with you. While you be with him, if you seek him, he'll be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. If you seek the Lord, if you love the Lord, if you accept the Lord, if you embrace the Lord, if you follow after the Lord, then His mercy will be for you. The divine partnership will be yours. On the other hand, if you forsake Him, then He will forsake you. That's the price of partnership. We will not forsake the Lord. I said we will not forsake the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 17 from verse 3. Second Chronicles chapter 17 verse 3. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and he sought not unto Berlin. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because the reason is written there because he walked in the first ways of David. And he sought not unto Berlin. He didn't seek after idol. He wasn't thinking that any magic will help him. Any talisman will help him. Or any guru somewhere will help him. He wasn't thinking that any witch doctor will help him. He wasn't thinking that any uncle will go and use long leg and make connections and buy papers so that he'll be able to pass exam. He wasn't thinking that anything idolatrous will help him. He did not seek after Berlin, but in verse 4, but such to the Lord God of his father and watch in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore, because of that, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents and he had riches and honor in abundance. And as the privilege of the people that are in partnership with the Lord and he became great and the Lord favored him and the Lord blessed him Amos chapter 5 verse 14 Amos chapter 5 verse 14 seek good and not evil that she may live so the Lord, the God of us, shall be with you as ye have spoken. It says, seek good, not evil. Do well, don't do evil. Live right, don't live after the corrupt ways of the people of the world. In your mind, in your heart, because everything begins in the heart. You have a purpose, you have a desire, I'm going to live right. This exam coming, I will not cheat. This exam that is coming, I'm not going to do anything that God will be displeased with. I will not call cheating help. There's a difference between help 
and cheating. You're in the example. And then you're asking somebody else, can you help me? It's not help. Are you not a Christian? Any good thing you can do for your friend, would you do it? I'm in need. I'm asking for your help. A friend in need is a friend indeed, my friend. Are you not going to help me? Don't use that kind of vocabulary. That's stealing. That's cheating. When you come to the exam hall, the lecturers, the, the, the teachers, so why Koneko? They are not finding out how much help you can receive. They are finding out how much you have learned. And that's what they are testing. And if you talk to another person and you are asking for help, you are asking for something bad, something evil. It's not help, it's cheating. And it's a sin. And it says, you should seek good and not evil, that ye may live. So the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you. As ye have said, it tells us in Joshua chapter 7. You remember God promised Joshua will be with you. But then something happened that God had to tell Joshua that there's a price to pay. If you're going to have the partnership of the Lord with you. Joshua chapter 7 verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. The children of Israel at this time allowed an Achan that took something the Lord had told them not to take. And the Lord said, I said I will be with you before. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But you have broken the covenant. And you have shifted away from the position I met you when I gave you that promise. Now, I will not be with you anymore. Except and until you destroy the accursed thing from among you. Divine partnership is built from the fact that you want to remain with the Lord. That's the condition in 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 14. For Samuel chapter 18 verse 14 and David behaved himself wisely in all his ways and the Lord was with him you see the condition there you behave yourself like a child of God you act like a believer you behave like you believe in holiness in the exam hall and before the exam and there is no talking to one another and there is no taking some papers in and there is no smuggling of little pocket dictionaries in and there is nothing that you are going to wrap up and put it you know inside your singlet and then bring it out when the immediate is not looking at you you will behave yourself as a child of god then the Lord says he will be with you. David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. And the Lord was with him. The Lord will be with us. I said the Lord will be with us. Point number three, progress through divine partnership. What brings divine partnership into our lives? What brings progress into our lives? Our agreement with God, our walking with God, our partnership with the Lord, it will happen. It will happen. We're told in Genesis chapter 39, again Genesis chapter 39, reading from verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. 
You see that? The master saw that the Lord was with him. It will be something visible. It will be something recognizable by the success you have. When other people are getting disappointed and they are failing and you're succeeding, then people begin to find out, why is he always succeeding? And it doesn't matter his center. Even when they cancel the results of that center last year and the previous year, because he was at the center this year, that center, they didn't cancel the result this year. They'll be watching you and they will see that because you are a child of God and the presence of the Lord is with you, that's the reason you are being prospered. Verse 3, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord made, listen to this, and the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. It's the Lord that did it and the Lord will do it for you. Verse 21, and the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. The Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You see, when you are a child of God, God gives you favor. And you say, huh, do, you, do you know who is going to emulate us uh, this, uh, this time? They mentioned his name. And then the young people said, we have found out that man. They said, is a tiger coming from that uh, place, from where they sent him. And they said, anywhere he goes, even when you are doing everything right, if you are pressed before the exam and you went to the toilet, if you are one minute late, that man, a tiger, he will send you out. You will not take that exam. And then they tell you that while you are preparing like this, if, if you say you are going to pray and you bow down your head like this, that man is a tiger. If you bow down your head and you are praying like this, what are you doing? What are you doing? You are trying to cheat. He will send you out. They said that man, that's the one they sent to us in our center this year. It's a terrible thing. No. That man, that tiger, he will sort him down when you enter. Ah, where are you? I said it will sort him down when you enter. The Lord was with Joseph and he showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. In verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. You see the word made there. The Lord made everything to prosper. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7. Here we find once again the progress that comes. The success that comes. Because of divine partnership. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7 For the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all the works of thy hands all your subjects you will make it all the works of your hand he knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness these 40 years the Lord thy God has been with thee thou hast lacked nothing you will not lack anything. Yeah. We're going into the exam with confidence, with assurance that the Lord will be with us and the strength of the Lord will be with us and the wisdom of the Lord will be with us. We will succeed. And when we meet after your exam, we'll meet with a smile. Yeah. And we'll be hearing good, good testimonies from you yeah. because it is going to be well with you. We're looking at Joshua chapter 3 verse 7. Joshua chapter 3 verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Divine partnership, the Lord being with us, makes us to be magnified what does that mean for you yeah you go for the exam 
And then, you know, people have been looking at you as, you know, you are just a common person in the class. And they didn't even make you a prefect or any officer in the class. You are just, you know, just a good student, a normal student. You never make any trouble. You are just an easygoing student, a humble Christian. And a studios want you. And anything they are doing, they say, oh, don't call her. You know, she is too much attached to reading and reading. She is not interested in this and that and that. And everybody said, you are just a normal student. And then the result comes out. And they paste it on the board. And your name comes up. And everything is highlighted. English, distinction. Literature, distinction. Yeah. Mathematics, distinction. Additional modern mass distinction, science distinction, chemistry distinction, physics distinction. And as they look at everything, they, and then people didn't know you. Who is this one? Ah, don't you know that deeper life girl? The one that will be walking like this, and if you talk to her before she talks, she'll say, In Jesus' name. Don't you remember her? That, that uh, young lady, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. That's her now. Don't you? Uh, yes, I remember. You mean that quiet girl? Yes. I said, yes. I said, you will be in Jesus' name. And then, when you are coming, as you are coming to the school, you have not seen the result. They have seen the result. And then while you are coming like this, they are pointing. That's him. That's her. That's him. That's her. That's him. That's her. We will get it in Jesus' name. You see, it is God. And they will magnify you before the people. You will get it in Jesus' name. Second Kings chapter 18. In Second Kings chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 5. Second Kings chapter 18, we're looking at verse 5. Here we are told, it says, He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord, he joined to the Lord and remained to the Lord, was glued to the Lord, and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him. That's divine partnership right there. The Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Syria and served him not. All well, that means that the king of Syria wanted to hold him down. That he will not make progress. And then he removed himself, refused to be submissive to the king of Syria. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 1. When you have divine partnership, then you are going to have superlative success success above success in second chronicles chapter 1 verse 1 and solomon the son of david was striving in his kingdom and the lord is god was with him and magnified him exceedingly when the lord is with us that's what he does when the lord sets up it's a boat, it's habitation in you, and it makes you the temple of the Lord. When the Lord is with you, He magnifies you, He exalts you, He lifts you up, He promotes you, and He grants you the greatness that you ought to have. And the Lord will do it. And the Lord has done it already. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. Reading from verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. As I'm going for your exam, the Lord will stand by you. The Lord will strengthen you. And then he tells us in verse 18, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Anything they are planning in darkness, the Lord will deliver you. Anything they are planning in the secret cult, the Lord will deliver you. 
anything conspirators are conspiring together planning against you the lord will deliver you and the lord delivered me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his everlasting heavenly eternal kingdom to him to whom be glory forever and ever and everybody said the Lord will be with you and everybody said the Lord will magnify you and everybody said you are going in for success and when you come back you will not bring to me here a poor certificate a useless certificate you will bring a good certificate because the Lord will be with you and when you are coming back watch you are bringing back I will be happy with it and I will want to show it to everybody when I'm preaching. I would like to use you an example because you are coming back with a good result in Jesus' name. Rise up and claim your promise and claim the promise of the Lord. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. Remember, you must be a child of God. Remember, you must be born again. Remember, you must quit and you must run away from anything that is not of God. And then the presence of the Lord, the power of the Lord will be with you. And as you are going, have no fear in your heart, have no doubt in your heart. God will be with you and you'll bring back something good and something great and something glorious. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, he will magnify you.